baby girl, let me tell you something. I saw Susan. I saw Susan the other day. Let me tell you about Susan. Susan's life has completely changed. Susan's life has completely changed. Susan's not the same person anymore. Honey's, Susan was here. She's here now. Here. Ooh, I'm being rude. I'm being so rude. Let me let me introduce myself properly. Let me say hi. Hey, gorgeous, and welcome to my channel. I'm Kapana Shimanga, and this is how I do things. The channel where you send me your questions, and I'll let you know how I do things, and I can take it as entertainment or use it as advice. Use it. Don't use it. Take it. Don't take it at all, darling. Listen, do what you will with it. Do what you will with it. You know why? Because me. Nah. Ek. Moi. <laughs> I'm no professional. I'm no professional whatsoever. Honeys, welcome. It's Sunday. It's a cozy conversation. We're having it in the evening. It feels a bit weird, but it also feels right because this is calm, collected, nice energy, you know? Diva, sorry for keeping you waiting, honeys. Let me say hi to everybody who's in the live chat. I see Valencia's here. Tembeli is here. Jasmine, Christos here as well. Buntle, Amina. Oh, all oh my favorites who come on Sundays as well. I'm so happy to see every single one of you. I know Khala's here. I've been working late, getting that money, securing that bag, working up that ladder. Girl, keep going. Things will get better. You will get energy. It will be okay. Asante is also here as well. Um, Paulette, Sylvie, hello. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this Sunday. We have Chantal. We also have um, Mama Tukoki. Wewe is also here. Nice. We have a full house. A full house. Hey, everybody. Joining you long, uh, joining you after a long time. I know, Diva, I've been missing you. I've been missing you for a while. Percy's also here. Um, my Gena's also here as well. Sasha, hey, hey. Um, Fellini is also here. Hey, guys. How are you? How are you doing? There's some new names that I've been seeing. Hey, girl. So good to see you. Yes. I heard the statement. Let me jump straight into it. I heard the statement. And it shook me. I was a bit offended. But at the same time, I was just like, it's not a lie, though. It's not a lie. It's actually it's not a lie at all. So the statement said that your life is a reflection of your standards. Have you ever been in a situation where you tell people that, no, my standards, I've got high standards. Or in a relationship that, you know, I need to set high standards for myself. We're always talking about standards, that I have high standards in my relationship. I have high standards in terms of where I work. All of those things about standards. But then, when I heard the statement, it, it reminded me, it brought me back into my place. You know what happened? Basically, what had happened was, it brought me back down to earth. It put me in my place. Your life is a reflection of your standards. You already have standards. And where your life is now, that's a reflection of your standards. Let me tell you something. So if you have a crappy life, if you look at your life and you say, actually, my life is nonsense, or my job is nonsense, or where, my, where I live, my house is always a mess, that's your standards. Your standards are a mess. It's not that your house is a mess. Your standards from a cleanliness perspective are a mess. You think that you hate your job, but you have high standards in terms of what you want for your career. Your job is a reflection of your standards. You think that you are supposed to have high income, like you're supposed to be a high income earner or that, you know, you're an intelligent person. You can make things happen. You've got good work ethic, but... You're, you you think you're a 100k type of person, but you're only like earning about 50k or 20 or 15. Your standards are not at 100k. They're at 15. I was touched inside, underneath my bra, beyond the padding, inside my ribs, into the heart, pierced right through. My standards. I need to check my standards. That's the goal that I have for myself this month is to actually check my standards and, and literally look at them and be like, okay, so my standards, what I think and I believe I am worth is here. But clearly, my life is showing me something different. Honey, honey, 
you know when you say that your relationship, you have high relationship standards. However, you're with a nonsense guy. I have some news for you. Your, st- your standards aren't as high as you thought they were. They are much lower than that. Your relationship is a reflection of your standards. If you're with a nonsense guy, then he is a reflection of your standards. I'm hurt, guys. I'm hurt. Patience is also hurt with me. Niza is also hurt with me. Chantal is also hurt. We are, Mabat, we are hurt together, fam. Fam, we are hurt. We are all hurt together. Let's hug. Let's hug. I'm hugging you. I'm hugging you. Don't cry. Don't cry. It's okay. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. We will heal. We will heal. So it's a Sunday. It's a cozy conversation. And we're going to talk about standards. And you know in a cozy conversation, we get real about what's actually going on in our lives. It's very real. And the realness of the situation right now is that our standards are not as high as we thought they were. And we need to edit them. If you have your drink, I have my glass of water. It is too far for me to reach it. What are you drinking? Because on a cozy conversation, you grab your cup of tea, you grab your cup of coffee, you grab a cup of hot lemon water, and we have this conversation. So let's get into it. What are the five things that you can do to actually assess your standards in life and to change your standards? A a line that I heard from Tony Robbins when I was doing research for this, because you know your girl researches, because his standards are like here when it comes to how I do things. I'm just letting you know. Your standards are, are are linked to your identity. And whatever you do in life, your mind, your work, your body, your habits will always fight to always keep your identity. So when we look at our life and we are in a bad relationship, we're in a relationship with a person who's genuinely trash. That means that our standards in relationships are trash and what that means is that our identity what we think of ourselves what we think we deserve in life is a trash relationship it's very hard to actually take that in our standards are a reflection of our life and our standards are linked to our identity who we think we are so when we are in a job that makes us unhappy, is toxic, and we stay there, that means that our standards are toxic in our workplace. They are, they make us unhappy. And subconsciously, in a place where we haven't even really taken a look at, we believe that is what we deserve. Because standards are things that are non-negotiable. If you don't meet my standards, you don't come into the room. If you don't meet my standards, you're not in my life. If it is in your life, that is your standard. So if you're in a job that makes you unhappy, then your standard for your job is unhappiness. If you're in a relationship that is trash, it means that your standard for your relationships is trash. And you have to look inside yourself and say, how did I ever identify myself as that? Why did I ever think to myself that I don't deserve a good relationship, that I deserve trash? Somewhere in my life, I decided, I made a decision that this is what I deserve, that this is what I'm capable of, that this is the level of career, level of love, level of income, level of life that is for me. (gasps) Okay. I'm taking a breather because this is too deep for a Sunday. (sighs) It's very deep. I need to gather myself. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. All right. Okay. Okay. Let's deal with this. Let's get into the five things that we can do to set real standards in our in our lives and to really understand how we can raise our standards. Because once we raise our standards, we raise our lives, honey. Number one is to make a decision to change and to raise our standards. Once you change your standards in your life, you're changing your entire life. Your whole situation changes. Everything changes. Your relationships change. Your day-to-day changes, your income changes, your house changes, your mindset changes. You change your standards, you change your life. So you make a decision in your life. It's about making a clear decision and making and writing it down in your diary. So in my journal, in her daily success journal, the journal that I created, my goal for the month of March is to raise my standards. Raise my standards in terms of the income I'm getting. Raise my standards in terms of, you know, my sex life, my marriage, my relationship with my with my baby, 
my relationship with with the people that I'm here with you guys on how I do things and on this YouTube channel, that is my goal, is to raise my standards. So I wrote it down. I was like, on this day, on the 5th of March, 2021, I made a decision to raise my standards. And that's where it starts. Because with everybody else, I've heard this so many times from millionaires and billionaires and people who get interviewed, high performance people, people who live at a level where we're just like, the one percenters in this world, people who are millionaires and they are teachers and they are firefighters and they're policemen, people who have a higher level of life. It's just a decision. They're just like, I woke up one morning and I said, this is no longer for me. I shall not live like this anymore. People who stop drinking alcohol, they're just like, I'm done. Done with it. People who lose weight, I'm done. I don't deserve this in my life. I'm over it. I'm not doing it no more. Mm, meh, it's not for me. That's how people are. It just starts with a decision and always reminding yourself of the decision every single day. So once you've made the decision, what next? What do we then say next, right? Number two is to gain an awareness of our current standards. Because like we said, our life is a reflection of our standards. So what are our current standards? One of the things that I've done recently and I would, I like to do it often now that I've done it already, is to do a life audit of the important areas in my life and deciding out of 10, where do I stand with this? 10 out of 10 is when I'm meeting my standards and is the best it can possibly be. Five out of 10 just means that this is not the best situation. I'm kind of middling it. And one out of 10 is trash, pure trash. Ha <laughs> ha. Ugh, icky, ew. That's where it is. That's where one is. If you rate that area of, of your life as a one, that's where it is. And the important areas are our health, our wealth, our relationships, our shmoney honey, our career, and our spirituality, our inner life and our spirituality, our relationship with God. And looking at all of those things and rating them out of 10. With um how with her daily success journal. Everybody who gets that journal gets access to her Best Self Academy. And we have, a, we have a masterclass in there about how to do a life audit. And in that life audit, it literally takes five minutes to do, but it's a game changer. And I've realized through that thing that I want my life to be here, but my life is actually here. And that's where my standards are. So this just shows me that there's a huge gap between the standards I have now and the standards that I want for my life a little later. So having a true understanding, identifying your life and saying, this is where my standards are, that's when you can get honest with yourself. Honey, your standards are not what you want in life. Your standards are what you already have. So if you have a trashy life, if your life is crap, then your standards are crap. That's just the reality. So if you want something, if you want a higher life, if you want a better life, for now, those are your desires. But until you reach there, that's where your standards will be. So identify the gap. Where are my standards now? And where do I want my standards to be? All right? I see the conversation is going down, guys. <gasps> and I'm being left out. <clears throat> Let's see. Let go of people that don't share your dreams and never support you. I agree. Hallelujah, Dion. Good to see you. Um, the optimist raising standards all around. Yes, honey. We also have... I need me that journal. I'm late, guys. Patience, come on over, honey. It's fine. You're not late. You're always on time. Never worry about that. Never worry about that. We're all latecomers. There's many latecomers. Joy, KG's also here. Vungai, hey, honey. The family is definitely growing. It really is. Hey, Mrs. S. Hi, KG. Joy is saying, I have a tool called Wheel of Life that speaks to that exactly rating myself on all the aspects of life to see where i'm at and where i'd like to go also how i can get myself that i like that we're making notes my notebook and pen is working been making notes all right so we've identified that where our standards are now some of our standards in life are kind of trashy some of our standards in life are kind of mediocre in the middle. Some of our standards in life are pretty good. Like one of the areas that I need to put myself in the back on is like, girl, you're doing well with food and you're doing well with exercise. Well done, babe. You're doing well from a career aspect. You know, you're, how I do things, consistent. 100K, yay. 
You know what I mean? So now that we've done that, we then need to do number three, which is to identify my mom is here. Hi, mama. My mom is here. I got emotional. Hi, mom. Okay, let me calm down. Okay, number three is to, <laughs> number three is to identify where we want to be in life. So we've already identified where we are, that our standards are here. Now, number three is to identify where do we want our standards to be? That we are not paying attention to our health. I've done nothing to do to, to focus on my health. I haven't changed the way I eat. I don't exercise. I haven't started drinking more water. So then we need to say, okay, fine. My health right now is at a three. What can I do to raise my health to a seven, eight, nine and getting even higher, right? So you're going to look at all of those places in your life where your standards are low and have an idea. Where do you want your standards to be in those areas? Once you identify the gap, then you can start working towards it. Now, this is the place where we get overwhelmed and we're just like, I need to raise my standards everywhere. I need to raise my standards in my health. I need to raise my standards with my wealth. I need to raise, like, I'm not making enough money. My career is not where I want it to be because I hate my boss. Now we're just like, I have too much to do. How am I going to change this? Choose only one area in your life to start working on your standards. Just one. Just one. You only need to choose the one that is most important to you. If you change your health, guys, you can't be good at your work. For all you know, you're having a crappy time at your job because you're tired. You have no energy and you can't think straight. So if your health is low, I would honestly say start focusing on your health. You could be making too little money because your health is at a devastating place. You're constantly thirsty because you're not drinking water. So now you can't think straight. Your voice is always cracking in meetings because you're not drinking water. Those are the things that happen when you don't focus on your health. So choose one area that you know will have ripple effects in the rest of your life and start working on that one area and raise your standards in that one area. That's it. Just that one area. If your health is good, but your money is, is terrible, it's tragic, it's a disaster, then look at your money and think to yourself, in my head, I am a millionaire. However, my current life and my current standards are telling me that I'm only making, you know, 20K a month. There's a very big gap between 20K and a million. So how am I, you know, let's just round it off, 240,000 a month, a, a year. How am I going to go from 240,000 to a million a year? And that's the gap that we're going to start working on, all right? Only one area that you're going to start raising your standards in that area. Because once you've look, you look at that, that area in your life where you start raising your standards, you start to think to yourself, look at other people who are also, you know, million per, per annum type of people. How are they working? What is their work ethic? You need to look at your life. Once you decide that something is a standard, do you know what happens? You look at your, yourself and your identity. Do you truly believe that you are worth a million? Because when I walk around every day, when I wake up every day, when I do my hair, when I do my makeup, I make sure that all of those things meet my millionaire status. And it's not about money, it's about my mindset. Because raising your standards is free. It's completely free. It has nothing to do with money. It's completely free. When you raise your standards, you first start with your identity. Do I have a million, a million per annum identity? Do I identify myself as a millionaire? Because that's how you raise your standards. Remember, your standards are always attached to your identity. If you don't believe you are worth a million, you'll never make it. If you believe that you are only worth 120000 per year, that is where you will stay. So you have to identify yourself as a millionaire. You have to identify yourself as a person who's worth, who is worthy of finding the type of love where you grow old with the person. You identify yourself as that. And if you struggle to identify yourself as that, you look back in your life and, and say to yourself, at what point in my life did I decide that I'm not worthy of that? What happened in my life where I tried? A lot of the times what happens is if you're, let's just say you've been trying to lose weight for a very long time and you failed and then you, you tried one diet, you failed, you tried another diet, you failed. You know what happens? You start to think to yourself, you know what? I've tried this thing and I've failed. You know what? 
I'm supposed to be this weight. You identify as a person who's supposed to be that weight. And every goal that you have thereafter about your health and your weight will be identified, will be stuck to that identity of a person who's supposed to be that weight. I know, my, you know, the one person I like to use as, as an example is my husband who went from a size 40 to a size 28. He's currently a size 28 now. You know, he identified himself. He always knew that I am capable of being this weight. And he then worked towards that. And if you also think of that, you can also identify yourself as a person who says, I am capable of this. Go back to a point where, when did you fail? When did you get a scar in your life from that thing? When did you form that identity in your brain that I am only capable of this? When did you form that limitation? Once you identify that limitation, you can change your identity. And once you change your identity, you change your standards. Yes? Yes. Let's wrap this up. Number four, remember that standards are non-negotiable. Not negotiable. If you meet a guy who you see is trash, you won't even give him your number. You won't give him the time of day. You won't talk to him. You won't allow him to even breathe your air. None of that. You'll just be like, mm -mm. non-negotiable. Because as soon as you say you have a standard of only dating polite guys, and then you meet a rude guy, and then you give him the time of day, that thing is no longer standard. It's a negotiable. It's a nice to have. It's no longer a standard. That's how life works. So realize that whatever standard you've set for yourself is non-negotiable. And this just leads me to point number five. Make a commitment to have your own back. Because the only person who's going to make sure you stick to your standards is you. You got to have your own back. And when you see yourself, I like the concept of having an internal coach. I have an internal coach, which is a mini me inside my body who speaks to me all the time. And she's just like, if I meet a situation where my standards are not upheld, that mini me inside of me is just like, nah, girl, we're not doing this. Don't do that. Walk away. And that's literally what my mini me says. If I don't want to wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning to record how I do things, my internal self goes, uh-uh, girl, you're not doing that. You're worth a million. Get up. You need to act like a millionaire. That's literally what my internal coach does. You need to make a commitment to have your own back. You know that super, um, what is it, overprotective friend? I have an overprotective friend who, if any guy ever stepped to me sideways, that girl's shoe was off and she was like this already. She's actually my cousin. So <laughs> be that person for yourself. That as soon as somebody tries to compromise your standard, the little coach inside of you goes, uh-uh, uh-uh, we are not doing that. Because you're the only one who can uphold your own standards. If you don't uphold your own standards, then I've got news for you. It's a negotiable. It is not a standard. It is just a wish. It is, a, it, it is just a desire. It's not a standard. What you have in your life is a standard. If you're not making money, then your standard in life is to be broke. It's very sad, but very true. There's an identity in yourself. Somewhere where you got scarred, somewhere where you got hurt, somewhere where you chose for yourself and you said, I'm not worth this. It's too hard to achieve that. You know, other people can achieve that, but I can't. It's a very hard thing to come to terms with, but it's the truth. That somewhere in yourself, subconsciously, you are keeping to that identity of a broke person or you're keeping to that identity of an unhappy worker or you're keeping to that identity of a, of a terrible relationship. Go back, find out where you got scarred, heal, and set a new identity. And that's how you set a new standard. And that's how every single time when you wake up, you get up and you fight for you to be in that identity. Um, so identity crisis, life audit time. Definitely. Definitely need a life audit. The top chat. Whoop, whoop. Really? What do you mean? <laughs> I'm loving this conversation. All right, cool. The pure gold right here. I know, right? I'm even shocked with myself. So Dorothy's saying, so true, honey. I'm also dealing with it myself. I think the reason why I'm working on my standards is mostly because I really do want what I, I think I deserve from an income perspective, from, you know, just a life perspective, an environment perspective. 
needs to match up with my life. My identity or what I have right now as my standards are here. But in my heart, my desire is to be here. And I want to take my desires and turn those into a true standard and see it live life in front of my eyes. Oh, and when you actually realize that you hate your job and your boss and people tell you, you, uh, at least you got the job. No, your standards are higher. Let me tell you. Okay, we're going to chat about this later this week about raising your standards in your career. But I have a friend whose standards are very high in her career. And actually, I know a lot of people. I know quite a number of women who don't take a salary that's below what their standards are. And they are hard negotiators. Do you know why? Because they have high standards. They've set those standards in for themselves. And they're just like, I will not work below this. And the reason why is that when you choose a standard, right? So you've chosen a standard that I'm a high income earner and that I'm a good leader, you know? So I'm going to work in leadership positions and wherever I work, they're going to pay me what I'm worth. She delivers on the level that she deserves to be paid. So many of us may think to ourselves, you know what? I deserve to be paid a higher salary. I deserve to be in a better job. I deserve to have share options. But your work does not meet that standard. And even when your work meets that standard, you accept the salary that you have because you think you're lucky. And when you think you're lucky, that's when you accept below your standards. You're not lucky. Your standards are above that. When you think you're lucky, you think that you're undeserving of what you have. You set your standards here and that's why you're getting paid here. But if you set your standards up here and you know that my work level is here and Therefore, my standards are here and I need you as an employer to meet me where my standards are. You're not scared to look for another job that meets your standards. That's what it is. That if you are at a place where you think that um, your worth is not being paid for, then you go to another place where your worth is being paid for. And you ask for your worth because that's where your standards are. We need to learn as women to negotiate what we believe we are worth. As an entrepreneur, I know that I need to charge my worth. And when I work, I work according to my worth. If I think that I have a higher standard, my work will be delivered at that high standard and therefore my income should meet me where I am. That's just how it is. Talking about Korea, we um, was offered a job paying 1.5 and I turned it down and I felt I was insane to my family since I'm not working. They felt I had to take whatever uh, was put in front of me we were literally talking about that now now with hubby where it was just like he was talking about mark zuckerberg had denied a one billion dollar deal because his standards were higher you all know that mark zuckerberg is worth way more than one billion <laughs> today so if your standards are high produce work at that high level look for demand your your standards but be, but be willing to meet those standards up here and over deliver. That's just how it is. If you say that you are worth a 1 million contract, then you better bring in that 1 million when you get to work. That's just how it is. If you want to receive high standards, you better give high standards as well. That's just how the world works, honey. Oh, this conversation, we are told that we are fortunate to have a job. Oh gosh, and leaving my job is not an option because it's um, frowned upon. Look for a job that meets your standards. Go for it. If I carry this belief, and I don't know who put it in me. I think it could be my dad. Who is this? I, I carry this belief that if I apply for a job, I'm going to get it. Or at the very least, I'm going to be shortlisted and, and I'm going to go for an interview. And to date, that has always happened. I've always either made it very close to getting the job, getting an interview, or getting the job itself. Um, competitions, everything. I know. I already know. It's in my spirit. It's in my soul. That's where my standards are. And what life has shown me has never failed to reflect what I believe in myself. Um, very few times where I've come out a loser, to be honest with you. But that's because I believe I'm a winner. And I want every single person who watches a video on how I do things to believe that of themselves. That you are a winner. That's how you approach things in life. And that's how you receive winnings in your life. All right, guys. We could go on about this conversation forever. Woo! It's been a mad one. Dimpa, you're so late. We're finishing. We are fin we're actually done. We're actually done. 
Thank you guys so much for joining this conversation. It's been a really, really good one. Thank you for joining. Thank you for sharing this video with everybody because my expectation is that you will share it at the very least on Twitter or on email or anything, just with one extra person. If one person shares with one extra person, this family grows. That's just how it works. Thank you so much for also liking this and giving a comment after this conversation is done. Have an absolutely beautiful Sunday, beautiful people. Thank you so much for joining. And thank you for getting us for 100K. Until later days, have an amazing week. Toodles.